give him to any industry. Mm -hmm. And even if it's a small manufactured, small business, mm -hmm. he would even do it just to be happy to see that person move from step one to, to step, step two. two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how we operate. That's the level we operate on. Mm -hmm. It's not about the money. We want to see our country move from step one to step two. And if, even if we have to give our time for free to see somebody move from the level that they're at and get to the next level, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It makes okay. me happy. Mm -hmm. I don't even care if you're in the same business, but it makes me happy to see you move from step one to step two. Okay. So with the plant and chip example, if somebody did a nice bag, nice design, and even with the sour, you can put the sour in a little pouch and put it in the same bag with the plant and chip, and you seal it. $100 gone to 150 200 Matter of fact, there's a lady who's selling plant and chip by coffee mm -hmm. in the middle of the road. She's got yeah. this stand. And I was driving with someone the other day, and they stopped to buy a packet of plant and chip. And I think the price went up from 100 to something. I don't remember what the price was. And he mentioned, now she's sealing it, now the price is gone up. Of course <laughs> of the price course is going to go up. She's got to use EPL. Seal, yeah. right? you know, so, and that's what we want to do. We want to see our local products gravitate. When my husband came back to the plant the other day, and he came in with um, tamarind syrup, and mm -hmm. added in a plastic bag with a knot, and you got to squeeze, squeze it out. Squeeze to get it. Yeah. But Alison, I mean, I, like, but I it's a novice, right? We, we, yes, we, we, exactly. I, and I haven't, I haven't done that like in over thirty years. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when he came, I said, "Let me taste it," and I <laughs> squeezed it out, and you know. But um, we have got to move from one level to the next level mm -hmm. because we're having people coming from all over the world. They're looking for products and services mm -hmm. to what they would have had from wherever they're coming from, and we've got to be able to deliver. To deliver, exactly. Right? Um, I am not selling fish yet to Exxon. I think they, you know, for Exxon, for small businesses, there's a website that you register on mm -hmm. after you register on that site. But I know they're eating fish. <laughs> I don't know who they're buying it from. <laughs> But, not but they're not buying it from Global Seafood as a small business. So we do look forward to hearing from Exxon to be able to supply Exxon with fish because they've got to be eating fish. They've got to be buying it from the rigs. I'm sure they're not just eating steak and uh, mm -hmm. ribs. You can't on, just you know. eat that. That's right. not healthy for your you stomach know. all the time. <laughs> so we are looking forward to Global Seafood to be participants in the oil and gas industry supplying them with our products because we're looking at developing additional value added products because right now we have filet, we have steaks, we have um, boneless skinless nuggets, we have the skinless boneless saltfish, we do trout, snook, snapper, mm -hmm. bang of Mary, boneless skinless saltfish. So we are second to none making all kinds of value added products from fish. And we want to give out the other secrets to the other value of added products that we are currently testing. But we're working on making all kinds of things, even with the species that are underutilized. We're looking at those species because we talk about overfishing um, of certain species. Mm -hmm. And that's another area yeah. that needs to be looked at um, because we want to leave our waterways sustainable for the next exactly. generation. Mm -hmm. So like I met with, um, I was at a luncheon with Conservation International. Conservation International worked with Brazil in their sustainable waterways for their artisanal fisheries, the small fishermen. And the small fishermen thought that, you know, they're putting all these zoning, they would lose money. But they made money. And how they made the money is because what Conservation International did they had a no-take zone. Mm -hmm. And what that means is the fish you is able to spawn and grow, grow before, before you they're utilized. Mm -hmm. So when they spawn and grow, they're not going to stay in that location all the time. They're going to move over. Mm -hmm. So just imagine you're not able to go there for, let's say, a year. Right. The just possibilities. Think, just think about 
the amount of fish that would be able to grow, to spawn, to grow so that nobody's touching that area. Mm -hmm. right? Ima, Ima, I'm thinking about so many things yeah, <laughs> as I yeah. listen to you. So, so, so we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. We just have to get the right people, the right fits in the right places um, in order for the growth of Guyana. But I think the growth of Guyana, it's not only a government, a, a government initiative. The government is there to make policies, but it's more of a private sector business mm -hmm. of gr the growth of our economy. We're the ones who are buying and selling. We're the ones who are creating. creating. We're the ones who are manufacturing. Government is not manufacturing. The president is not sitting there thinking, how oh, I can make Mm -hmm. um, and we don't want him to eat like, Right. How I can make some <laughs> fruit juice from some mangoes. Maybe for, for him to drink at home, <laughs> you know. Or how, you know, so, or the Minister of Finance thinking how much money we need in order to make some planting chips mm. so that the government could make some money. You know, that's not their job. job. That's the job of the private sector. Mm hmm right? The job of the private sector is to create industries. Mm -hmm. It's to say to the government, well, we need a tax holiday because this is what we're doing. This mm -hmm. is how it's going to be advantageous to Guyana. This is how the sector is going to grow. This is how it's going to contribute to the GDP. This is how much employment is going to bring. You know, that's the private sector job. So you believe that we are, we currently, we do have the the environment and, and there is the possibility for the private a sector to actually do that? No, of course. Mm -hmm. I am very optimistic. Okay. Um, I just came from a meeting, I think, yesterday, mm -hmm. where um, from Small Business Bureau, mm -hmm. and Small Biz Business Bureau and the Ministry of Business is more than behind creation of businesses. Mm -hmm. They're more than behind. Small Business Bureau currently have got the low interest loan. Mm -hmm. You go to small business um, in collaboration with Republic Bank and GBTI, you can get a loan for 6% up to the ceiling, I think. I don't know if they removed the ceiling, but it was at 30 million, up to 30 million. Okay. So the environment is there. People have just got to use their creative minds and take the risk. Entrepreneurship is a risk. When I came back here, I've been coming here since 2002. Okay. Looking for opportunities. And migrated when? Um, 2014. We came, we came here in 2014 to set up this business. To right? set up the business, okay. And our intention wasn't actually to be here all the time in Guyana. We were going to look for a good CEO, a good manager, a good secretary, a good, and we were going to use technology to run the business. But mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. Not. I don't think it works like that any part anywhere, of world, you mm -hmm. know. And especially in the developing country, and especially when you're growing a business. So we wound up being here more than full time. We are here more than ninety-five percent of the time in Guyana, mm -hmm. just building capacity and growth in our business. We invest our profits in our business, you know, because we see the potential. We have the vision. We know where it can go. Um, Right now, I have two youths. One, both of them are from Victoria. Okay. And we engage them. One is an intern. The other one comes in from time to time. We're working in building capacity in Victoria. We're working on building really? capacity on the East Coast. Um, I had some gentlemen who came into my office. They want to buy a boat to supply us with fish. And I'm encouraging them. I give them the form. And I have forms in my office to register your business. So if you come to me, you say, you know, Ms. Allison, I want to do this. I say, well, you got to have a red, a legal business before I can do any business with you. Here's the form. I even help them to create a business name. Jane of all trades, I can follow you, know? you then. So, and that's what we do. We build, even within our organization. In terms of the capacity, and I'm sorry to interject mm -hmm. here, but in terms of the capacity building, especially in certain communities and so on, you find that they're receptive, though, and there is a willingness to become well, involved. Well, people are more proactive than reactive, I find. Mm. Um, we went into the village, we asked, we were looking for people who were farming because there's a project being worked on mm -hmm. to create value-added products. 
And um, you had people saying, if you tell us what to farm, we can go and farm it. We need it now. Mm. What you're going to farm is going to take six weeks or more than six weeks to grow. So we need people to be proactive. You know, why are people farming? And one set of people are complaining, oh, we don't have a market, right? Hmm. But it's your land. No, my land is your land. But then you have people who are still farming, not complaining of the market, but they're bringing stuff to the market. Yes, they would, in some instances, they are losing. But if we create the in manufacturing type of type. industry where the wastage can be used to make value added products in the manufacturing sector, mm -hmm. and now you're talking about um, solar energy alternative energy. GA, G, Ghana Energy Authority represented that. They're doing um, evaluations for free. How much panels you may need to do X, Y, and Z that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why we cannot set up these type of industries. I'm in the fishing industry. I can do everything. I see the opportunities, but I can do everything. I have to focus on the fishing industry, the value added that I want to make, the overseas that um, I need to get to. Um, I had a lady who flew in on a turnaround flight yesterday. She came in from Barbados yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. No, last night. Mm -hmm. And took the first flight out this morning with fish into Barbados. Right? And what we need is transportation. She went with Liat. I texted her this morning to say, um, I hope everything went well mm -hmm. and you're back home safe. She said, unfortunately, three of my suitcases was left behind, mm -hmm. right? So we still have a long way to go. Like, mm -hmm. I have a lot of orders for the diaspora for air shipments. I refuse to do air shipments because of the unreliable mode of transportation that we have out of Diana, you know? So we do container loads, and if somebody has the opportunity that they want to take the fish by air, the responsibility is left on, on the onus them. is left on them. But um, just imagine, she paid for six suitcases of fish, she and her husband came in, and three of their suitcases of fish was left at Ogo. So, we still that have is a that is a big inconvenience and indeed and it, and it's, and it's one no of the facility. things that deter. And, and that is no what facility. I'm coming to because that's a it's a good three and you see, that's, that's a, another investment opportunity mm -hmm. a cold storage at our airports but then we have lots of issues you know it's a business that I have thought of okay. but I can be in 15 places at the same time or three places at the same time but it would be a good business investment to have cold storage at both of our airports to facilitate issues like this. And it would make money because if Liad can take the three suitcases for if whatever you, reason, she can something. pay for cold the storage story. for the next flight. Right? right. So, so um, mm -hmm. there are so many opportunities um, in Guyana as we speak for Guyanese to take the, even for Guyanese in the diaspora that are in the U.S. with all kinds of um, backgrounds because a lot of times in the US you may have a degree in accounting and you may be working in ICT. You may have a degree in ICT and you're working in pharmaceutical doing something administrative. So we've got people in all kinds of different yeah. sectors. So you may not want to remigrate but you can come back and give your assistance. Yeah, but it you know, needs service. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I met a gentleman this morning as I stopped at Quick Surf um, to pick up some breakfast. And he's a chemical engineer. And we spoke, I had to go, but it was so much that we touched on mm -hmm. on making product out of food. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are here. Guyanese have got to grasp it. If not, you're going to miss the boat. Mm, and we don't want that. No, the boat is going to sail away. The train is <laughs> going to leave the station, and you will not be able to jump on because <laughs> it would be nobody else's fault but 
the fault of yourself. Yes, for not taking yeah, advantage not taking of the opportunity. Yeah, not taking the opportunity because the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. You, have, Like I said, small business is there, right? Um, and I give advice for free. Six, seven, I know two, you're two, giving four, it right one. now. No, I, I, I give advice. We got, for, yeah, because I know. want to see my country. Um, you can't have oil and you're still being called a third world country. Yeah. Impossible. It would be disrespectful, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't even like when people say, oh, Guyana is a third world country. We're not a third world country. Developing. Right? The, we are these developing days, right? Country. These days, that is the, the, the politically correct term anyway, developing country. There are people who really and truly, professors and scholars and so on, they urge you not to describe it as a third world country, but We're I guess those in the country. developed world still describe our, it. Our hunger that. numbers, we don't have. If people are hungry in Guyana, it's because they want to be hungry, <laughs> you know? But um, even the limers on the corner, people who like lime on the corner. It's a and choice. And often they're, and they're, it's a choice. I, I know said, some people will some, not agree, but often no, it's a choice. Yes. I, I, said, I said to some limers the other day, they were standing on a corner and they're drinking beer and they're eating a mango. No, it wasn't a mango, it was a tangerine. Mm -hmm. So I said to them, and they were across from a piece of land, right? So I said, you were eating a tangerine because as I was passing the name, they said something. So mm -hmm. I turned around and I said, you know, you guys are standing here liming. You know how much <laughs> money you got from the tangerine that you all said the sign of the eating? <laughs> and they said, money, what money are you talking about? I said, when you finish eating the tangerine, I said, how often you all just be on this corner? Oh, we's coming every day. This will be meet up. Mm -hmm. I said, y'all could see the tangerine tree grow. Because if you are meeting up every day, then we all here 365. Mm -hmm. So you are here all year. So if you throw all them seeds you all eat it, you all can plant an orchard. Mm -hmm. It is so, indeed a good so I, th so I think in our little communities, we've got to take different approach. We cannot go in with intellectual jargon. Very, very important, Alison. And, and and I wish because and, and viewers, I must say our conversation lasted longer than than, than we've uh, intended it to, but that really is a good thing. I am appreciating it and I know you're at home are appreciating it. I'm happy that you talked about the intellectual jargon and so on. Say to the public why why you can't do that, why it will, you know, not so no, much. No, it won't resonate it it won't resonate at all times with your target audience. Mm -hmm. Because all of our target audience would not have had the opportunity, some of them would not have even had the opportunity to go on a plane. Mm -hmm. Some of them would not have had an opportunity to graduate from kindergarten school, much less high school. So we have got all kinds of different target audience that we would have to be privy of. So as we go into communities and we relate to our community mm -hmm. and to get them motivated, yeah. we have got to come to a level of understanding as to how to get our community motivated. Because some of our people in the community don't have a job. They don't have no money. They want money. Some of them don't want to work for it. So in order to get these same people who don't want to work for it to understand, to get them to work without even realizing that, that they're, they're working. Actually working. Mm -hmm. That is the approach that we have to take. Mm -hmm. I remember going to one of the villages, I think it was Victoria two years ago when the president would have gone to, they had a, I don't remember what they called that, mm -hmm. but he was there. And as I was walking out after the event, there were some young men sit just hanging around I want if the president bring jobs, <laughs> right? They ain't gonna walk. Now, we talk in Victoria. They have the best irrigation system in the backlands. Really? Right? <laughs> you have a water pump that separates the two villages, Coven John and Victoria. Victoria. And you listen to them. So even I started to engage them after. I said, so what you all want to do? We want a job. So what do you need to, what do you know to do? Well, we do anything. Right? 
And that is our problem. We don't have jobs for anything. Yes. Now, specialize. What is an I have a job opening right now for an accountant. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you can say, I know if you do anything. No, I think, <laughs> right. Oh, all right. How are you, uh, the, the person hiring, supposed to? Correct. I understand. You know, so, I we it. have to be very cognizant of our target audience and motivating them in order to do what they themselves won't realize that they're doing, but they will be happy with the deliverables. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's just to get people to understand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. People to understand. And once you break it down to them, and they say, wow, you know, I didn't look at it like that, you know. Mm -hmm. They might get it. And no, they get it. Because I've seen, I've, I, I have seen it happen. Right? I've experienced it happen. So we as a people in Guyana, as Guyanese, we have to be our brother's keeper. We have to be our country's keeper. Because as we look around, everybody wants to come to Guyana. Mm -hmm. I remember speaking to someone from overseas that is working here. And she said, you know, before I leave Guyana, I got to get a piece for myself. Right now, if you got a non-Guyanese coming in your country, and tell you they got to get, a, got to piece get a piece before they leave. What about us, right, right? here? Uh -huh. Are you just sitting there? Oh, the government ain't got no jobs. I can't find a job. I've got people coming to my office to say, "Oh, Miss Allison, um, I'm looking for a job." Now, what do you know to do? Do you know to use a computer? Yes, I know to go on the internet. What do you do on the internet? Oh, I know how to use Facebook and in Miss Allison job don't require you to use Facebook. Mm -hmm. Ms. Allison's job needs you to know Excel, mm -hmm. how to use the formulas, how to calculate the waste from the raw material, what's the profit margin. That's what Ms. Allison needs calculated, the bottom line. Ms. Allison needs you to know QuickBooks, right? I need you to write a letter after I say to you what I need the letter to say. And that is the proactiveness that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So then they come in and you say, so uh, what do you know to do? Or what is your qualifications? Oh, we have CXC. How much you have? Oh, we got grade five, four. All right, so go back and get mm -hmm. a couple of grades. Because we're talking about 19 year olds and 20 something year olds. Okay, very young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? But you're looking for a job and you think that you're entitled to the job because that is the word, and I love that right? you use the word entitled. But, but the entitlement don't work for my um, for mm -hmm. my business because if you screw up my accounting, GR is waiting on me, <laughs> right? If you screw up my numbers, yeah, I am working with bad data because you're gonna tell me after the fish is filling, I only get him back 20%. So I got a problem because when I do the calculations on how much I buy in the fish in the 20%, we have a very big problem, a big disparity. So I say to the boys and girls, the high schoolers, even to the, to the primary schoolers, ensure you pay attention, mm -hmm. graduate, mm -hmm. Even GTA, I told one lady, the young lady the other day that came to my office. I said, why don't you go to GTA? It's free. I don't want to go there. So I said, um, what's wrong with GTI? Mm -hmm. And she didn't really have a clear answer. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I would have graduated from GTI. I did ordinary diploma in commerce. And it was a real stringent program. You think you was at a university. Mm -hmm. And it contains statistics business accounting, business law, you learn torts and contracts, um, marketing. I was able to use my marketing notes and use it in the United States and then passed it on to my daughter. Mm -hmm. Right? So I encourage people to use the education system that you have here. Try and get, of course, some internships. Mm -hmm. And internships is not all about money. The experience is valuable even more than money. money uh -huh. Because that experience that you would get, you can take it somewhere else. You can even create your own enterprise. enterprise yeah. So I am happy I was given this opportunity again to come on your program, Malika. 
and speak to Guyanese at large because this country belongs to Guyanese. I don't care what you look like. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. I think we have what, six races, right. and now we and might yeah, be And I think we've, sure. we've moved away from it. And it's, right. It's, you know, you know so, there's, so now we don't we're even a cook know. up. We're one big pot of right. cook up. We don't even point. know what we have anymore, right? <laughs> Which is not such a bad thing. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. So, Guyanese at large, this is not about the party you belong to or who's in government in power. Mm -hmm. It's about Guyana. Yeah. It's a holistic approach. When you look around, you see all kinds of people coming here. They're not coming here because who we look like. Oh, the money. bottom line is for what the they can money. Get. Mm. And when they're talking about dollars, they're not talking about Guyana dollars. They're talking about U.S. dollars unless they differentiate and say euros and pounds. <laughs> True. <laughs> right? So it's all about dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm. I do look forward to people calling me, asking me anything. I don't care. Because Guyana is on the upward bound. We don't have trains, but the train is moving out the station. Mm -hmm. The boat is moving from the Stelling. Oh, and the Stelling is going to be left there. And you don't want to be standing at the Stelling, just looking at the horizon and saying, where is the boat? Alison, it was such a pleasure <laughs> chatting with you today. I want to thank you very much for coming and sharing with us. Um, I am really appreciative of this especially since you've made my job very easy today <laughs> in that she had so much and, and viewers it, you know it i always like guests who have so much to share with us because i think as a people there there are lots of things that we need to learn especially where business concern and uh in terms as allison did say that you know the train is is, is moving it's moving and you know it, in order for us to move and progress we need to understand what is happening around us and conversations like this one that we had today indeed help us to understand. Oh no, definitely. And I can give you a quick example. Mm -hmm. When I moved to East Orange, New Jersey, mm -hmm. well, I was in Orange and I was involved in local politics with the then mayor, right? Two, two su successful mayor mayoral campaigns. And then I moved to East Orange. And the first um, town hall meeting that Mayor Bowser had at the high school, I attended the meeting. And he said, as he closed, he said, listen, the train is about to leave the station. And if you don't jump on the train, the train is going to leave you, and you will not be able to jump on the train. Mm -hmm. And I waited to see Mayor about I said, Mayor, I am ready to jump on the train. And he said, yes. I said, yes, I'm ready to jump on the train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I jumped on the train. I never worked in local government, huh? mm -hmm. but I performed in different capacities. I was appointed as a commissioner on the Zoning and Planning Board of, of Adjustments, and I was coming from Zoning and Planning in Orange. I was there for like about eight to 10 years, and then I went to East Orange, and then I went on the Zoning and Planning Board of Adjustments. Even worked on, couple of, on mayoral campaigns and coffee collages and that kind of thing. So I understand when the train pulls out of the station. Mm -hmm. Alison, once again, thank you very much. Viewers, those of you who have missed this conversation, um, of course, it will be on YouTube before the end of today. It will also be on Facebook. This would have been a conversation with the Chief Executive Officer of Global Seafood Distributors. I am Malika Ramsey. It has been a pleasure. Thanks for inviting us into your homes. I always urge you, be good, Guyanese citizens. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. This has been Facing the Nation.